G'day, good morning. I see that we're streaming, we're live, fantastic. It's all working. Uh, we are up to day number 23. Day number 23, one week to go. We're nearly there, which is, whew, that's pretty cool, pretty cool. 30 days straight. If this is the first time here, welcome. If uh, you've been following along, welcome back. Fantastic. Uh, as you can see down in the description, I have the playlist, which covers uh, everything, all, all, all the days that, that are there. Uh, I've scheduled out the rest of the week, so you can jump on there and set a reminder for a particular topic that uh, that uh, gets your attention, that you want to learn more, a little bit more about, or um, yeah, you could tap all, all of them and come back every day, which would be awesome. Throw a comment in the chat, let me know you're here, if you've got any questions. If you have something that I haven't covered yet in the last three weeks and it's not there for the next week, uh, just send me a message or like a couple of people have or just put something in the chat and no doubt it is in my Stronger Photo Composition 4-Step System. It'll no doubt be there. Uh, here's the link to find more about it. If I can bring it back up. There we go. All right, that's the link. And as you know, 4-Step System uh, breaks down 100 plus different composition techniques and tools, which is really exciting. Makes it simple, simple, simple. First one, position and prepare your camera. Smartphone, mirrorless, SLR, doesn't matter what. I know there's a smartphone photography training that you hear at, and but it, it really doesn't matter. Whoops, pressed the wrong button there. There we go. What I was trying to press was not that, that one. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to have this system for, for too much longer. As much as I love it, uh, and it has some pretty cool stuff like that, the new system I'm going to be looking into in a couple of weeks' time it's very complicated, but hopefully we'll simplify everything. It'll give me less internet issues. Uh, yeah, so fingers crossed for all that. Where was I? I was talking about something. Live. <laughs> uh, yes, the system. Yeah, the four-step system. So first one, prepare, position the camera. Second, position the main subject, the visual anchor. Uh, number three is position all the contextual elements or the other focal points. Number four is editing, where you can go in there and really make it just pop. All that composition, all those efforts in your compositions, you can make certain parts of the photo stand out by doing local adjustments and that sort of thing. Alrighty, okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, converging lines. Same, same as vanishing point, it, it's all very, it's all just different, different names. Two point and three point perspective, which is kind of a a, a variation of it or a different use of it. So, uh, yeah. So with that, let's play the stinger that I won't be able to play for much longer. Here we go. Alrighty. So just get rid of my name there. You know who I am. There we go. Well, I threw on Greg's name. He was my last guest. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's good fun. It's good fun. All right, converging lines. I've got my my um, my course open here. I've got all my, all my points here. So vanishing point, diminishing point, uh, converging lines, point of convergence, single point, linear perspective. <laughs> goes by so many different names, isn't it? It's a scene like this that you're already familiar with that, like train tracks, we've all seen this as we all get into photography. We all go out there and, and take a photo like this. If you don't have a train track, you can do this with a road. A road does the same thing. So as we've talked about previously, if I can bring it up, where are we? Diminishing scale perspective, that's the one. So it's uh, lens subject to lens distortion, all that sort of thing. So things that are further away get smaller and closer. So parallel lines is the key ingredient here. So train tracks have parallel lines. Uh, another example, I'll bring up another one here. I was just preparing before we jumped on, was this one here. That one there, so that one there, parallel lines. They don't have to necessarily be lines, but elements that are lined up. So the bottom of this pier doesn't have lines, but they've all got the same, uh, where the pier touches the water, that creates a line. It does, does that make sense? Alrighty, so this works, and you see this, and it gives that perception of depth. That's what it's all about. And composition, it, when people talk about composition, it's one of the things they miss all the time is that Placing the uh, the elements in the scene, how they all interact with each other, how the main subject and all the elements interact with each other, is a great definition. But composition is so much more than that. It's about, as you know, 
directing the attention, providing the narrative as they go through and look at the hierarchy of different visual elements, and also creating depth. You know, if, if, if we didn't have this, then it would just kind of look like a flat image. We need to have things that are further away look smaller, and you need that atmospheric uh, perspective, all these sorts of issues, with the, or not issues, all these sorts of inclusions that create that sense of depth to try and in, get us into and looking into and through the photo. That's that's how you get a really engaging and impactful photo. All right. I talked about this on a recent podcast with an overbuzz with Jürgen Strauss. So much fun. It's a small business podcast. I got in there and talked about um, the business, the community, you guys, and I talked about things like that, about that composition and, and, and how to create that engaging photo because for small business owners, you want that call to action. You want to try and get them to stop the scroll is the is the term, stop the scroll. And this is one of those things that does that. It, it just grabs your attention because you've got that depth. You may stand out more. All right. Just having a look at my notes here. Da, da, da. Basic ingredients, two parallel lines, and a vanishing point. Yep, you need a vanishing point. <laughs> uh, if you don't have a vanishing point, I'm going to get to that one. Okay. All right. Okay, got all that. Got all that. Yep. Okay, so I'm looking at my my course here, and uh, okay, two point perspective. So you can have an image like this one. Let me just bring this one up. Okay. So a photo like that, it doesn't have a vanishing point or a diminishing point. It doesn't have a point inside the frame that they're a point of convergence does it but you can see there that we have parallel lines again the roof line and the footpath okay and they are converging but we don't have a convergence point so what this does is this provides scale provides depth provides proportion and you can see there that it, it you can imagine standing there because if you stood there and, and you stood close to the to the building this is what happens. And this only works if you stand at the corner of the building. All right. Another example is uh, for cars. Here we go. So this is another example. So with, with cars, uh, get down nice and low. And not only can you have those two perspectives going off to the side, again, shooting from the front corner of the car. And great tip that was shared after I, after I shared my, <laughs> I shared an article or published an article, 30 tips to take better car photos. And uh, and I think it was, I think it was Terry reached out and said, "Hey, there's another one, and that is to angle the wheel so that you don't see the tread of the front wheel. You can see here, you can see the the tread. Okay, see there. So this point. Hey, hey, did you know on the iPhone there's a new feature here, markup, and I can just go in here and I can highlight this. How cool is that going to be for training? Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so that area there that I've circled in a really bad circle <laughs> is, see how you can see all that tread. So what he said was actually turn the wheel in and then you see the, the hub, the wheel, that sort of thing. So it just adds another visual interest, visual element, a, f a focal point, if you like. Uh, so yeah, I've digressed again. But you can see there, you've got the parallel of the roof and the, the chassis converging. And on the other side, you got the, the bonnet, the top of the bonnet, underneath, again, converging. And because we've shot from a lower angle, we've got a third point perspective shooting up. So it just works. It works so well, doesn't it? Alrighty. Uh, okay. I think that'll wrap it up. Nice and quick one today. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, yep. All right. Perfect. Like I said, reach out any time. Hit me up with some... Uh, questions if you have any questions or if you've got another technique that you want me to cover in the next week let me know and uh, we'll wrap it up there so thanks for thanks for joining me enjoy the rest of your day bye bye